<laughs> okay, good morning. It's a Friday. How are we feeling? Yeah! yeah. yeah. We're feeling yay. That was a solo. <laughs> We're feeling yay math. That's great. So it is a Friday. I'm feeling good. Um, we have a test Monday. So we are going to review <laughs> these problems. Uh, remember we said in order to review, you should do like three problems from each section. I went ahead and just made the three problems for us. So let's do that together, nice. and uh, hopefully you'll do really well on Monday. Are you optimistic? No. Yeah. <laughs> no don't do that. <laughs> it's like, like looking up, it's weird from the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's scary. Wait, wait, where's, okay, What's up? Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Properties of logs. Properties of logs. If we're subtracting two separate logs, what can we do with their numbers? Divide. Divide into a single log. Correct. Single log. This is the mistake that people make. I'll write the right version first. They'll write log over log. This is not log over log. This is a single log of this number equals three. And we just did it in the last four problems, in fact, in which we turned a log into Wow. Exponent. 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 Very good. We turn it into an exponent. Let's turn this into an exponent, please. Two to the third. Two to the third Which equals x plus four over x minus four. Like my stance. I'm like got a thing. <laughs> yes. So this is eight. That's cool. And then you can uh, multiply both sides. Cross by x. multiply. Cross multiply. Cross multiply or multiply both sides by x minus three, yeah. which is the same thing in fact mathematically it is. So if we multiply both sides by x minus 3, x plus. Did I write, did I write no, it wrong? Yeah, it's x minus 3. Is it 2x minus, minus 6 to the third? No. 2x minus 6? You mean 2 oh. to the third? Oh, OK. It's 8 and then. 8, yeah. 2 to the third became 8. 8x. And then x plus 4. You guys, this is so much fun. I don't want this to end. <laughs> Equals 8x. I'm totally serious. We just had fruit. I'm happy. Please <laughs> slow down, clock. Uh, all right, solving for x now, right? Yeah. Um, so let's go with minus x and plus 24. Plus 24. And we'll have 7x equals 28. Oh, that's always beautiful when that happens. Four. X equals 4. And we can look in here and see that it'll work. You'd only be able to cross off the log if the log was also minus. Right? Correct. Okay. And prediction. Is that the next problem? Yes, that's the next problem. No, yeah. Uh, anyone yeah. still working on this? I do want to honor you. Yeah, still on that one? Okay. So, go ahead. I'm going to actually erase the problem, because you have that in your paper already, and put down the next one. Notice, on this problem, notice what's missing from this problem. Uh, base. Bases, right? So you know that the base is 10. You know that the base is 10 and if it's missing. Same, so you don't need it. And in fact, we have logs on both sides. So we're going to so end up canceling. It's x, x times plus, x, no, plus x plus 4 equals 5. Four. Is it just x squared plus 4? So can I write it as a single log first, please? Do you need to? Yeah. I'd recommend it. I mean, I know you, you don't need to, but I'd recommend it log for people. For the last problem, for reasons of the last problem, because there's only one log there. Yeah. And people would cancel logs your opportunity. mistakenly. Please. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. What, what ends up happening, I've seen people cancel yeah. logs right away, and they end up doing this. This is correct. This is correct. However, it's only correct because there's a log on both sides. If we did something like this on the previous problem, we get it wrong because there's only one log. So we have to turn that into an exponent. Oh, I see. We have to turn it into exponent. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Why is it not x plus x plus 4? X, no, because uh, if you add two logs, you write it as a single log with multiplication. So I'm going to put this intermediate step in here which is log of x times x plus 4 equals log of 5. Now we're at the liberty to cancel the logs on both sides. And we continue. x squared plus 4x. How about minus 5 equals 0? Yeah. Minus 5 equals 0. Who's your friend? Who's your friend? Me. 4 and 1? You. 
Besides that, who's your Factor. friend here? Factor. Factor, Joe. yeah. Factor is your friend. X equals 4 and X equals Joe. Four. I love Joe. X minus 4 and X minus 4. Okay, four. we're going to Joe this trinomial, please. I love Joeing. So 5 and 1? No, 4 and 1. Four and yeah, five and, 5 and 5. 5 and 1, which is positive? 5 plus 1. No. No, 1 is negative. Right, add to positive 4, right. we need right, positive right, 5. Right, 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 right. Minus 1, good job. You're, you're very involved. So now we have x equals negative 5, x equals 1. Can logs be negative? No. Logs may not be negative, so x equals 1 is the answer, spelled with a w. Next problem. Oh, I like this. Do this for fun. We should do this tomorrow, Saturday. <laughs> so, same base, right? Is there an international symbol for yay math? The international symbol for yay math is yaymath.org. <laughs> Enter. That works. Yeah, <laughs> browsing. Um, so, same base. What's the base here? Four. four. Base is four. Can we make this base four? No. We can't. What other base can we do? Two. How about base two for 72, really? No. 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 So, we can't make the same base. So we log both sides yes. indeed. So we add so you put the log first. Three S log three S yes. log. Using four. properties of logs. If you have a number to an exponent, it moves to the front. That'll be three X log four equals log seventy-two. No, we did uh, less, than great, less than or equal to. Less than or equal to, very good. Now we want to get X by itself. We should divide by log. We could divide by Log four. How about divide by three log? Four? We could do that. Why can't we log yeah. by three? Why can't we log four times three? Divide. We could do that. And divide by that. You divide by the whole number. Yeah. Sure. That's all. How I'm gonna I'm going to do the uh, division first. Oh. But you are free to do it on the calculator first. So three cancels. Log four cancels. X is less than or equal to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you got in the calculator as well. So I know in class we've been doing 3 times log 4 and hit enter, right? Then you would divide by that number. Yeah. Then you would divide by that number. So that's that number right there. You want me to give you? Please, yeah. Uh, point six final nine answer, right? Six. Final answer? 0. 0.6926? I got oh, 0. 0.37. I could have gotten rid of that. Okay. Confirmation, someone else? 0.3727? Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait, here, yeah. I didn't get that. Log. I got, I got 1.0. Here, I'll do it really quickly. Log. I got 0.9. 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 I got 0.
problem say? E to the 2x equals 6.2. Nice. So now we have E. How do we cancel E on both sides? Ln. Ln. Natural log on both sides. Nice, guys. So that's a huh. Natural log on both sides. And we'll get 2x equals ln 6.2, right? So if we're faced with E on both sides, we should cancel both sides by dividing or multiplying both sides by a number to get the E by itself. And then once we get the E by itself, we took natural log of both sides. X equals, calculator, 0.9123. And then you can check that as well in the calculator. We'll leave that up for a moment. Okay, common logs. Now, some calculators already have this functionality, but assuming you don't, assuming there is not this functionality, let's see if we could try to solve this problem by turning it into an exponent. Please. Can you do log 50 divided by log 5? Correct. You're doing the property. So we're, gonna, we're building up to that property. Let's derive. The, the problem asks uh, using common logs. And that's the rule. Okay. Let's let's create the rule. So what would this be? Wow. Five yes. To the, uh, five. Yeah. Uh, to the x equals equals fifty. Fifty. Right. Right. So five to the x equals fifty, and we ask ourselves, five to the what equals fifty? Nothing. Not really, right? What neighborhood of numbers are we talking about? Maybe Four, three. Bonds. Two and three. Two and three, right. Two and three. Let's put it up. Five squared is 25. Five cubed is 125. So this is closer to two or closer to three? It's about in the middle. Closer to two. It, it's sort of closer to two because 50 is closer to 25 than it is to 125. Yeah. So we know that our answer is somewhere between two and three. Somewhere. Right. But we don't know how to do this. So when we can't create the same base, what do we do to both sides? Log. We log both sides. And log here. This one. Log here. I think you guys are gonna do well Monday. Are you are you still optimistic? I feel like I feel good. That's good. Yeah, I'm getting nods. I'm getting nods. Or I'm getting people Hi. just like, looking at their calculator. <laughs> X log five <laughs> equals log fifty. Divided by log five. Divided by log five. So, so do you want us to show the no. like, how we derive it? No. No, I just want. To I don't. Um, I want you to, if you uh, want to, you may. But this is the derivation. So back to the original, Mr. Uh, Schwarzenegger. What was this? Log 50 divided by log 5. What's the name of the people? Log 50 divided by log 5. Indeed. Change your base formula is that you take the log of the number divided by the log of the base. So that is, you're free to use this rule at your leisure. And log of 50 divided by log 5 is not log of 10. Correct, it's not. It's a common mistake people make. What is this number going to be? 2.4307. Good job. Two. Let's put it here. 2.4307. And we agreed it was somewhere between 2 and 3. Closer to 2, in fact, really right around the middle. And so there's... Never mind. Are you sure? Well, I was going to say, because I remember uh, trying to just, like, if I did log 5, if I did log 10 of 100, it doesn't work. Log 10, log base 10 of 100? Yeah, because... 2. So, no, no, I agree. Okay. But it's not the same as log 550, even though the both numbers are double. You're right. Yeah. Because these are exponents. What do you mean? Exponents don't divide. Yeah, this is log base 2 of 100 not equal to log base 1 of 50. Or 4 of. So let's do, yeah, how about something else? 4 of 200. Because this is 2 to what number is 100? Yeah, and that's this 4. Is 4 to what number is 200, so these are completely different problems. Okay. It's a valid point. No number 2 to, not, it has to be a log to find that one. Right, logs are exponents. This is an exponent. It's saying the exponent of 2 equals 100. 
that exponent is roughly between 6 and 7. Okay. Oh, now we're going to derive the half-life. So, um, Little Miss Sunshine. Little Miss Sunshine. You talked about the half-life of carbon-14 and whether we had to remember that. So you don't have to remember as half-life of anything, or at least the, the coefficient. But could you read the problem for us here at number 15? Cobalt-60 is a radioactive element that has a half-life of 5.7 years. Okay, keep going. Find the value of K for the half-life of cobalt-60. Round to four decimal places. So who could explain what half-life means? Can you explain half-life means? Are you sure? I thought I would just do like a half. Something about that half happens. <laughs> half, so if something happens, let me try to get someone up. Yeah, please. Uh, does that mean that like every, every year it like goes half or something? It's got to do something. 5.7 is the half-life. Yeah, you're close. Yes? So the amount of time for a half of it to decay is in this case, 5.7. Yes. The amount of time for it to decay to half of what it was is 5.7 years. Okay, nice. So we're left with, if we start with 100 grams of something, 5.7 years from now, we'll have 50 grams of that something, right? So now it's asking for find K. That's awesome. K is the rate of decay. So the formula for this is? Y equals next. Necked. Y equals necked. Y equals necked. That's such a weird word. Alrighty. So let's fill in what we do know in this thing. We do know the amount of time that we can fill in. It's 5.7 years. I'm going to put that right here. 5.7. We don't know K. So I'm going to put that here. K. E remains. And now we're left with y and n. Can someone remind me what the y means and what the n means? Please? The y is the resulting amount. This is the resulting amount, and, and the is n is? The initial amount. The initial amount. One okay. and two. So we could do one and two. Where would the one go? Where would the two go? Y would be one. Yes, one and two. So this is a simplistic way to, to re uh, regard, view, to regard half-life. We started with two of something, and we're left with one of that thing. Nice. Okay, and then divide both sides by two. And we're left with 0.5 equals e to the 5.7, okay? Okay, you know what to do now? No. You ln both sides. Oh, yeah. Right, right. So it's currently e, so we're going to ln both sides, that's right. ln both sides. Red here. There we go. You green and red ln both sides. And this will cancel. ln of 0.5 equals 5.7k. It's amazing that you do this work and you get an actual rate of decay for a non radioactive element, 5.7. But I'm confused at what you do at the answer. Well, the problem's asking for what K is. I know, but I got 0.2823. Okay, so shouldn't this be negative? No, yeah. it's negative 0.1216. Negative 0.1216. Wait, why? Is it only to check that? LN. Oh, 0.5. Oh, just put it back in the formula. Yeah, LN 0.5. And so now that we're talking about this, my fault, viewers, why? Why is K negative here? Because it's decay. Decay, decay. This is a rate of decay. So the exponential function will go like this. Because the amount of cobalt, remember the graph that we've been doing earlier? The graph will go something like that. It should just be a negative amount of years and then a positive amount of decay. Right, so we can't think of it as, if we think of this as year zero, then 5.7 years ago would be negative 5.7 years. But we wouldn't do it that way. Right. So we think of years as positive and the decay is negative. So I'm going to leave this in a red box. K is negative 0.1216. And what is number 16 say? 
Yes, please. Uh, if there is 100 grams of cobalt-60 present today, how much will be present after 20 years? Round the answer to two decimal places. Okay, cool. So let's actually think of this logically. If something splits every six years or so, something splits every six years. So we start with 100 grams today. How much after 20 years? So let's do it. After six years, we have how much? 50, right? After another six years, we have how much? 25. For another six years, we have 12.5, right? That was 18 total. And then we have two more years. It's like another third. So a third of it goes away. A third of it goes away. Maybe, maybe eight something, eight or nine. And again, we rounded 5.76. So it's going to be even less. There's going to be less. Maybe seven or eight should be left. Do you understand what I'm doing verbally? Yeah. I'm halving it. What, what is it? Halving it to 8.7860. So it's in the single digits. Now let's do this scientifically. So we'll put in our y equals net. New amount, starting amount, rate, and time. So what's the new amount? <laughs> oh, we don't know it, right? We don't know the new amount. What's the starting amount? 100. 100. Wait, it says present. Oh, okay, never mind. Okay. It should be going down though, right? Yes, it should be going down. It's decaying. So we start with 100. E to the, the rate of decay for cobalt 60 is negative 0.1216. And it's asking after how much time? 20 years. And then we apply all this in the calculator. Do we need LN in this case? No. No, no we divide don't. by 100. We don't. We don't. No. We're solving for y. All this is numerically oh, yeah. in, in, in the calculator. Yeah, it's 8.7. It's 8.7. Nice. Nice. Well, we actually predicted it well. 8.7861. 786. So 7.9. 8.7. Four digits. Nine rounds is round to two. Oh. So seven nine what? What's the units of the answer? Eight point seven grams. Grams. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. That was a good uh, prediction. Okay. Next one is. Um, after how many years will a hundred turn to three? Oh, I, so basically, well, you can kind of use how many years? You can kind of use what we did before in the previous problem. You could, yeah. And you can see how it's half. Not going to be that long. It won't be that long, yeah. Half of this will be Seven another uh, six, another six years or so. Mm -hmm. Will be twenty-six years. That'll be about four or four point five. And then you have to do a half of half. So maybe another three on top of that. So maybe close to 30 years now. Let's do it. So what is the, oh, let me put the formula y equals m e k t. What's the new amount? Three. Three. Starting amount? 100. 100. Uh, rate? Negative 0.1216. Time? Time. We don't know, yeah. Divide both sides by 100 first. To simplify, we get 0.03 equals E negative 0.1216T. Okay. And now, Lin. Do we Lin? Natural water. What? Jeremy Lin. Drem, uh, Dremelin? Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin. Oh, Jeremy Lin. Yeah, with Jeremy Lin both sides. <laughs> it's funny how, like, in 20 years when people watch this, they're like, who? <laughs> so, LN. So there will be if there is a 20 years. <laughs> More people, positive. <laughs> More people are still watching. More people still watching. People are going to watch. You could, like, beat that out people if you don't. People are going to watch. People watch.
What if you just beat out everything I said? <laughs> yeah, like after every like and a random thing, like yeah. No so, faith in your input. So so next so so next uh, after after we L and we beep. <laughs> <laughs> Negative point one two one six. Negative point one two one six. Notice now, ln of a decimal will be negative. Dividing by a negative, ultimately time will result in a positive number. And that's what we want because we want a positive number we of want years. A positive number of years. And I was I predicted close to thirty. What is this? Twenty-eight point eight. Twenty-eight and eight. Twelve. What is it? Twenty-eight point. No. Point eight. Twenty-eight four. But how does that relate to years? No. I, yeah. 0.84 is the decimal of months. Oh, how, okay. Yeah. 84% of a year. 84% of a year. So you could do 0.84 times 12, if you want to okay. do that. Wait, times in months? Didn't we just input time in the problem above in years? Yes, this is 0.84 years. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Yeah, I so who can do this for us? It's 10.08. 10.08, so it's around 10 months. Uh, it's October. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, start the party. It's October of the 29th year, we have three grams of cobalt 60 left in our dish. All right. Yo, score one for humanity. Woo. Where'd the cat go? Okay. Okay, you guys, um, I think we can uh, stop at this point and just go back in time to the others. The last 10 minutes. So please give your hands a clap. What? Hands clap. And your feet. Thank you. Thank you.